you've probably been in a situation where you want to create an infinite scroll. And as a front-end developer, it's probably a very common case. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an infinite scroll with plain JavaScript. And it will look something like this. I've done some minimal styling. And when you scroll down here, the loading will show and it will load more data. And I created this in a special div. You can, of course, also apply this to the window itself. Okay, so this is what we're building. And for this one, I've provided you with some starter files. So make sure to download the starter files from the link below the video. There's some stuff here that I don't want to focus on in this video. For example, the styling and the HTML. I created some basic HTML. I have a div with a class of content, and that's the div where we're going to show all the data, the list of data. In this case, it's email addresses. And I'm grabbing these from a free API. And I also have a div for the loading text. And I style these ones here. So I don't want to focus on this in this video. All right. Then I have the scripts. And I already provided you with some code here. For example, I grabbed the DOM elements and I set up this uh, variable here for us to use. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And also I have this async function where I get the users from this free API that I found where you can get random users. And it's of course important that the API supports pagination like it does here. So I have this uh, template literal here where I change the page number dynamically. Then I convert the data with a JSON method and then return the users. So we have something to work with. And then I created this render users function. And what this does is it renders the users to the DOM. So this is a function that will create div elements for each user and render them to our DOM. And in this case, I'm applying it to the content div, as you can see here. All right, so this is the starter code. And we are going to create one more function. I'm going to focus on the infinite scrolling itself. So let's begin in our terminal, in our console. I'm going to break this application here and go to my starter files. As you can see, I navigate inside a folder that's called infinite scroll start here. So make sure that you do that. And then you run npm install inside of that one. I'm bootstrapping this with the parcel. So that's why you have to do this. Otherwise, you can just create these files yourself, of course, and you don't have to have a dev server like Parcel will create for us. But it's very convenient to use Parcel or Webpack. Parcel is really easy to set up, so that's why I use it for this uh, vanilla JavaScript stuff. And we have installed that now, so we can start the dev server up by running npm run dev. And you can see that it starts up this environment for us. That's at localhost, one, two, three, four. And that's the one that I run before. So I reload it and there's nothing there now. I'll open up the console so we can console log stuff out. All right. And you can see that it installed the regular node modules folder and the dist folder will get created when you run the dev server and you have a cache and we also have a package lock file now. All right. But let's focus on the scripts.js file because we are going to start here, as I've told you here in the code. So I just remove this here and we are going to create some new stuff here. First, we are going to create a new function that's called load more users. And this one has to be a sync because we have to await on this API data here. So we mark it as a sync and we create a function load more users. And in this case, I'm used to using arrow functions when I work with React, for example. But in this case, I'm using regular functions. You can use whatever you want. And also, this tutorial is in plain JavaScript. I thought about creating it in React. But in the end, I created it in vanilla JavaScript. But if you want me to create it in React, just put some comments down below the, this video. And if there's enough of you that want me to create it in React also, I can do that. All right. So that's the load more users function. Of course, we have to have parentheses there. And we also need to set up an event listener. So we can do that now. Put some comment here. Event listeners. And I provided you with this code here that will grab that DOM element. That's the div that's called content. So we're going to use this one. And as I said, you can also use this on the window itself, but I want to have it in this div now. So if we take a look, 
in the index.html file, I have this content div that I create down here. And I set up some uh, width and height on this one. These ones are fixed for this tutorial. So it's a square, 800 pixels by width and by height. All right, back to the scripts.js. So from the content div, we want to add an event listener. And we have an event listener that's called scroll. So every time we scroll the mouse, this one will get triggered. And it's the load more user function that we want to call. So this function will get called every time we scroll the mouse. And from this div, we are going to have some properties that we need to use to calculate when we should load more data. And there's three things that we need to know. We need to know the height of the content div, and that is 800 pixels for now, but you can have a situation when this height change, of course, so we have to grab it in a better way than just using a fixed value of 800 pixels. So we're going to grab that value. We also need to know the height of the content itself, because when we have more content and want to scroll, that content is going to be higher in height than the div itself. And then we also need to know how far away from the top on the content div that we have scrolled. And these values are something that JavaScript provides us with by default. So we can destructure out these ones. So const, we have a value that's called scroll top. We have another one that's called client height. And we have one that's called scroll height. And these ones we're grabbing from the content div like this. And then I want to do some console logging here. So scroll top colon, and then we can console log out the scroll top. I'm going to copy this one because I want to console log out all of them. We have the client height. Like this, and we have the scroll height. All right, so this will give us these values in our console, but we don't have any data in this div now. We have to fill this up with data. We create a const that we call users, and we await the get users function up here. We have to await it because this is a sync, get users, and we're going to call it with this variable here. That's the next page. And I start this on one. All right. And then we can render the users and send in the users. And this is, of course, the function up here that renders the users to the DOM. So when we got all the users, we call the render users, and it will be rendered in the content div. And we can increase the next page variable by one, like that. And we want to call this function initially also before we have scrolled anything. So load more user. Uh, maybe it should be load more users like this. So we change to an S at the end also. And then we're also going to increase the next page by one. So this one will trigger initially before we have scrolled anything and fill it up with, in this case, I choose 50 users. Save this file, go back to our page, and you can see that it loaded all these users for us. And now we can scroll. We have to be very careful now because we haven't set any restraints on this one. So it will fetch data like crazy. So just scroll a little bit. You can see that we get the values here. And these values are the ones that I wanted to show you. Because here we can see we have scrolled 28 pixels from the top of this content div. We have a client height of 800 pixels. That's the one here. This is always going to be 800. I set it to a fixed height in the CSS. The scroll height is going to be the height of the content itself. So now it's loaded a lot of users. So that height is 12,250 pixels. You can see if we load more, this one is going to increase. But please don't scroll too much now because it will go crazy. Because we have to set some restraints now and only load data when we have scrolled to the bottom of this div. So let's go back inside of our code and do some modifications here. We know these values now, so we can remove these console logs. 
And now we create an if statement. And if the scroll height, the scroll height is the height of all the content in the div. And we subtract the scroll top from that value. And the scroll top is the value that we've scrolled from the top of the content div in this case. So with this if statement, we get this value here and we have to compare it with the client height. So if this one equals the client height, we know that we have scrolled to the bottom of the div and then we should do something. And in our case, we should trigger this function to load more users for us, all right? Then when we're loading, we also want to show the loading div and I'll grab that for us up here. So on the loading div, we add a class with class list add and I created a class that I call show. So this will show the loading text by applying this class. All these lines that we created here, we can move these ones up because we're showing the loading text, then we can grab the users. And when we grab the users, we don't want to show loading anymore. So we set loading class list dot remove show. So this is it. This is all that you need to create an infinite scroll. A very simple one. I know that there's a lot of uh, libraries out there that does this for you, but it's actually not that complicated if you only want this simple functionality. So we save it and see if it works. We try to scroll. And as you can see, when we're at the bottom of the div, it will load more data. So it's working. There are, of course, a lot of improvements you can do on this one because it's really simple now. For example, you need something to reload when you resize stuff. In this case, I've set it to fixed width and height, but that's probably not going to be the case in the real world all the time. And you can use, for example, something that's called resize observer in JavaScript to check if the content resizes, and then you can trigger the function to load more data on resize also. But in its simplest form, we've created an infinity scroll with just a few lines of code. And that's what I love about this because you don't need to have large libraries for stuff if you know some tricks to create it yourself with a very few lines of code. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. See you in another one.